and welcome to the Healthy Half Hour Podcast. We are your hosts, Richard and Karen Inslee. The Healthy Half Hour Podcast is your resource for all things healthy, and we will be discussing how to make nutrition, fitness, and lifestyle choices work for you. We will be sharing our own personal insights along with research gathered from working in the health and fitness industry for the past 10 years. Our show is brought to you by The 7 Day Shred, which can be found at 7dayshred.com. And please feel free to visit our podcast website, which can be found at healthyhalfhourpodcast.com. And now on to today's show. Welcome back, and we normally just give you a little bit of a recap what's been happening in. You could have sounded more enthusiastic then. <laughs> our life. I'm tired. I it was, I, I well, it was a probably three thirty a.m. start because uh, my uh, alarm clock purrs. Apparently, uh, cat seems to think that uh, we need to get up early than the. Uh, like physical alarm clock does he knows best yeah he certainly does and um well i know like we've not done a lot this last week the elections are all done and dusted now i am officially a school board trustee um dun 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 yeah so i've already been invited out to my first engagement (laughs) so a remembrance day engagement and um yeah, so it was a bit of a surprise, some of the results with the election, how a mayor for the city got re-elected back in, and I've put you to work doing some renovations in the house. and Yeah, yeah. keep me busy. Yeah, now that what? the weather's turning mm. like a little bit colder, but um, somebody said to me this morning that they've predicted a nice October, well, no, nice um, November, so... Who knows? Yeah. One minute it's a long cold winter, next minute the farmer's almanac said this, next minute it says that. <sighs> we'll wait and see, just keep mm-hmm. looking out the window. Yeah. So today's podcast is going to be on motivation, because it's one of the big questions we always get from people. Oh, I'm not motivated. Oh, oh I'm going to hire the services of a personal trainer to give me motivation. Can you give somebody motivation? Uh, no. <laughs> really? I, no. I can give, <laughs> we can give accountability and we can kind of give extrinsic motivations, which we're going to talk about in a while. But from really a lot of it's got to come from within you and it's got to be come from your own desires and your, your will to change or make some, make some new behaviors in your life. And, oh, did you want to... No, you carry on. (laughs) No, I was just going to start with some statistics because people get way more motivated usually on January the 1st because... Or a Monday. Or a Monday. And if January the 1st is on a Monday, which I think it was this year, actually, Mm -hmm. it was a double whammy. The mother load. Yeah. So people get, like, motivated a new year to diet and lose weight but i just wanted to start with a few statistics regarding that because it ties into motivation because like people think that they're motivated to lose weight and make some nutrition and lifestyle changes but statistics say that 95 percent of those who lose weight will actually regain it all back again and some it says 25 percent of new year's resolutions are actually abandoned after one week 60% of New Year's resolutions are abandoned after six months. And the average person makes the same New Year's resolution 10 times without any success. So, And again, a lot of times people are just blaming on a lack of motivation. They just pull that motivation word out of the hat. And there it is. It's the uh, it's the one to blame. It's the this the thing that went wrong. It wasn't nothing to do with them. It was just motivation. So what is motivation? If you actually look in the dictionary, it's derived from the word motive, which is defined as a need that requires satisfaction. So I mean, it, it starts off in good stead, really. I mean, we're talking about satisfaction. So motivation itself is the reason for people's actions, willingness, and goals. So, excuse me, again, those motivations 
are, have to be from a goal or a willingness to do something or as a certain action or behavior. So as I mentioned earlier on, we've got to extrinsic ones and we've got intrinsic. So they're rather large words from saying inwards and outwards, basically. So with an extrinsic one, an extrinsic motivator may be like how we, I started in 1998 as I signed up for a marathon. So I signed up to run a marathon. I was running with some friends. I was running with the company for the company I worked for, for a charity. And that was an extrinsic motivator to me to not be able to run a mile in uh, January, to be able to run to 26 miles by the time April came. So again, it was a great motivator because it was extrinsic. When you're at the race, you want to give up. You're kind of tired. You've had enough. But the crowd there cheer you on. Uh, and that's another extrinsic motivator. That's people actually standing there, willing you on and get, wanting you to do things. Again, that community of my friends who were with me, that was another extrinsic motivator. So again, all these people tied in, the event, the crowds, my friends, and they all, you know, wanted to me? meet your good self. Yeah. <laughs> wanted me to complete this uh, race. So again, all extrinsic motivators. Why do you go to work? You go to work to get money. Why do you need money? Because you need to pay your bills. Why do you have to pay your bills? Because you need a house, you need a car, you need a phone, you need all these things. And all these things are ext extrinsic motivators to send us to work to go and get money. You may love your job, you may hate your job, but every morning when it comes roll around, if you have to start at 8am, you're there at 8am on the dot to get going. Why? Because it's an extrinsic motivator. You're motivated to go to work on a day in, day out basis to earn money so you can live, so you can keep going. So again, they're all extrinsic motivators, all things that work from the outside in. So things that work from the inside out are kind of those self-desires, like increasing knowledge. A lot of times, I mean, we do that especially. I mean, our desire to learn more and study more to help other people, but also to help ourselves comes from that intrinsic motivation. And intrinsic motivation, again, is to improve your health, to prevent illness, not to fall down from a heart attack when you're 55, to help yourself and, again, to, to, to be a more healthy you. And also, like, for, for family. So, again, you want to be intrinsically motivated to look after yourself for your family's point of view. Also, natural development. You want to maybe, again, just walk some more or do something that helps you naturally, naturally develop yourself from maybe, like I say, from a knowledge point of view, from a health point of view. So all these natural developments come in as well to do that. So, again, you've probably realized I've not said in any of that lot, lose weight. Because, to be honest with you, lose weight is not a great motivator. And it's, it's something we're going to really cover today. Because people, like Karen just alluded to with the statistics, a lot of people's things straight off the bat with New Year's resolutions or Mondays or whatever it is, is I want to lose weight. I want to lose 50 pounds. Uh, it's a great starting point. But as a motivator, it really just falls flat on its face. And my tagline with my business is always because you can't lose weight to get healthy. You've got to get healthy before the weight loss will actually happen. So saying that your motivation is to lose weight, no, your motivation should be to get the body healthy because if your body's not healthy, the last thing it is going to be interested in doing is letting you shed any pounds at all because it's going to channel all its energies and resources into everything else. And so if your body's not healthy, and I don't mean that from the point of fact, oh, I've got a cold, I've got the flu, I'm I'm sick with some summer bug. It's basically immune systems not operating properly. It's like basically the body is not healthy in itself. So you you've got to be motivated to want to improve your health and not prioritize weight loss as that mo as that driving motivator. So again, some of the typical questions we get in this uh, in this industry all the time is, uh, why do I lack motivation? Why can't I stick to a goal? How do I motivate myself? And again, people don't, they, they, all that thing is a tie into motivation again, but maybe it's, you're not that you can't motivate yourself. It's just that you're picking the wrong thing to actually start off with that motivation. Again, losing weight is a great starting point. And then we kind of pick the goal of, I want to lose 50 pounds. Now to lose 50 pounds takes 
time. It's not a quick fix. It takes perseverance and it takes patience. So a lot of times people try something and nothing happens. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say that, oh, if the scale doesn't drop, I'm not motivated to carry on. And I'm just lost for words. What about your health? What about feeling better? What about the future? What about the next 20 years, 25 years, 30 years? You may be carrying a little extra weight, but what about your health? The things that you're doing may be so small day by day to improve your health, but all these small things go to make larger changes. And again, the scale might not be moving, but if you're lifting weights and eating, trying to eat right, you're doing something positive. And there's something called like an immunity to to change. And basically, we, we're biologically hardwired to sense danger and so we only focus on the things that could go wrong and not the things that could go right so people say that they lose that motivation like Richard just said like oh if the scale doesn't move I'm going to lose motivation and it's not it's because like we're hardwired to biologically sense danger so we're only going to focus on what could go wrong and what could go wrong with your weight loss journey is that it doesn't happen and you don't lose any weight. So we've got to kind of like get past that. But it is that immunity to change and we are biologically hardwired to sense danger. So we focus on all the things that could go wrong and, oh, I'm not going to be successful in my weight loss like journey. And I think we kind of talk ourselves out of continuing or we expect somebody else to give us that motivation. And talking of focus talking saying losing 50 pounds we're focusing constantly on an outcome we're actually looking at what is going to happen instead of what is happening so you've probably seen a million memes that say it's the journey not the outcome well they're all right so i mean you need to focus on your journey you need to focus on day by day not focus on the outcome the outcome the outcome will come along if you focus on the day-to-day things So again, have a look at your breakfast, have a look at your lunch, have a look at how much exercise you're doing, whether it's specific exercise, lifting weights, or whether you're just taking the elevator instead of the stairs. And yeah, like you say, just like having the focus on that journey, as Richard said, because it's it's all well and good having that result in mind. I mean, and I use the analogy of, um, you know, you go to university, your goal is to stand on that stage with your cap and gown and your certificate in your hand. But if that's all that you focused on for four or five years of university and not each module and the journey, then you won't actually get to that stage and that certificate. So you've got to focus on every little habit change that you make and not expecting, like say, somebody else to give you motivation or motivation to always be there. I mean, because you've got to like look at each little step. And the thing is as well with that motivation, it is doesn't end. It won't end. So I mean, to think you're going to be unmotivated. The day it'll end really when you need to stop looking after yourself is the day they nail the lid down. And I mean, that's the end of it. So it's like we had Mark and Rhonda on here in the summer doing the interview. And and like they were saying, like Mark said, especially, this is it. This is what we've got to do for the rest of our days to kind of just maintain health and maintain the healthy weight they've now got. So again, if you're motivating yourself with that focusing on an outcome, then again, you're just setting yourself up for failure. So one of the things, again, we said earlier on is goals. Goals we're all goal orientated like i say the mortgage pay your mortgage down get enough money to have a car get enough money to go on vacation these are all goals and they're all attainable goals so if you're setting the goal of oh i'm going to lose 100 pounds and that's all you think about that really it's an attainable goal but that goal is so far away you can't even see it with binoculars so really that goal should be now to lose one pound and then we'll worry about the other 99 after it and just keep chipping away at little goals If you're not losing weight necessarily because you've got other issues, focus on improving your sleep. Because like we've said on other podcasts, sleep is a massive part of losing weight. The amount of things that can go wrong in the body, wrong, sorry, wrong being the wrong word. Too many wrongs don't make a right, do they? (laughs) So that lack of sleep, again, will really hinder anything that's going to help you lose weight. It's going to make 
alter so many different bodily processes that it's going to make weight really hard. Maybe you're not drinking enough water in the day, which we spoke about before. There's a myriad of different things that you can do to improve your health and improve behaviors. And again, all these small things will end up maybe making that change in the scale. And like Karen says, with her tagline that you can't lose weight to get healthy. You've got to get healthy to lose weight. And if you're not taking steps forward to get healthy, then that weight is just basically going to stick to you and it's going to stick to you until you start making these changes. And sometimes we subconsciously sabotage our own efforts as well. I mean, especially if weight loss is one of your goals and people actually become very comfortable with they're they're fat like it's and they fear how people will perceive them if they actually make significant changes and lose a lot of weight i mean we just mentioned mark and Rhonda, but every everybody was commenting on like how great they both looked and i know that we've mentioned this before and i think it was on their podcast as well that people would go into mark's office and say like you know well okay like how, how did you do it um changed like some eating habits and moved more and people were like oh oh is that it and and you could see like the 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 disappointments in their faces like you could hear it in their voice because i say people thought there was some magic pearl and some big like motivational strategy going on that was like that got them there and it's like no we kept it simple (laughs) And again, at some point, you're going to have to lose the motivation thing and just go to discipline. Because really, that's kind of, again, going back, harking back to those guys, Mark and Rhonda. I mean, it's discipline that basically got them to where they where they are and what's put them now in that holding pattern of maintaining that health and good behaviors. So people are often looking for excuses. And the same with motivation. Oh, I've not got any motivation. So today I'm going to. And I mean, cheat meals is always the big thing. And the thing with cheat meals, again, who are you cheating? I mean, if you actually look in the dictionary and look up what cheat means, it says acting dishonestly to gain an advantage. Who are you being dishonest to? Food is just an inanimate object. The only thing you're being dishonest to is yourself. And what advantage are you gaining apart from none? And I don't like that term cheat meal, I've said before, because when People use it and a lot of trainers do, oh, on Saturday you can have a cheat meal and cheat always gives that negative um, like impression that you are doing something wrong. And it's like, no, you, should, you shouldn't be looking at having maybe a higher calorie or whatever, higher starch like meal as being a cheat. No, it's just a, a different food source. It's And you're not doing anything wrong. No, like you say, you're not, who are you cheating? Yeah. Nobody. You're not acting dishonestly to anybody apart from, I mean, not even dis- yourself, because you know you're doing it. How can it be dis- dishonest? And there's no advantage. And how can saying somebody's cheating be a motivator as well? Well, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's just an excuse to just like, just to get off that discipline trail and i mean if you look at bodybuilders they're the most disciplined bunch of people of all you look at the the things they do i mean it's just just discipline from start to finish to get where they are and i mean people always again it's it's food rewards i've got one thing to say about food rewards we're not dogs stop rewarding yourself yeah, with food don't do it get off it you know and then, you know you get your dog to sit you give it a treat no we're not dogs just we're adults you know we you should you should be able to think past that and actually work out for yourself that you know you can do this and you don't need rewards the reward is the good health feeling well actually again the weight will start to come off as soon as this is your goal if it's not your goal again other people have different differing goals for towards health weight loss again we tend to talk about most because it one seems to be the one that most people kind of get hung up with so lower those expectations a little bit If your expectations are uh, are like for the shooting for the stars and you want to get to the moon, I mean, you'll get to the moon because you've got to go past it to get to the stars. So don't overburden yourself with huge, large expectations of, I want to do this, we're going to do that. One step at a time. Again, the journey is what the journey is. And I mean, you've got to make the journey to actually get to the end. And I mean, like I say, there's really not an end. I mean, I started, did that marathon in 1998 and 20 years later, I mean, it's what we do for a living now, 
trying to help others. And again, my weight pretty much has remained probably on an even keel. My fitness levels have gone up and down in those 20 years, depending on my fitness goals with regard to doing triathlon or just to lifting weights or building a house or doing other things. So again, things ebb and flow, but you've really got to, again, the motivation thing, nobody really lacks motivation. It's maybe you're just going about it the wrong way. And you can actually be seen as like motivating other people and obviously we don't want to keep like <laughs> using Mark and Rhonda but they did such a great job but so you said not long ago that they were in the gym and somebody went up to them and said they'd been watching their journey and how motivating that was and to how much how well that they'd done um and I say that Mark and Rhonda didn't give this person motivation, but it motivated this person. Yeah, I mean, this this guy, I mean, he's a regular gym goer and he just said he was inspired uh, by what they'd done. Because like he said, they'd kind of, I'd started with her probably November time and obviously into the giant market started in the February. And like he said, by June, most people have gone. And I think this was September last year. And, you know, he said, you're still here. You're still doing it. And he said, you look around, there ain't many. He said, it's just the regular people in here. But he said, you two are sticking it out. And to be honest with you, it's been nearly, it's two years next month since I first met Rhonda. And to be honest with you, motivation's long since gone. I mean, it's just her discipline. It's just things she does. And again, lifestyle. Yeah, her perseverance and patience, like I say. And they've stuck it out. I mean... I do know people that have been on a diet for the last 10 years and they've not really got anywhere. Maybe then they should, you know, but again, like we've said before with the definition of uh, insanity is keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. You need to keep changing things and trying new things because the body will catch up. And we've said ad nauseum on other podcast things, exactly the same thing. So if uh, my argument with that is if that person hadn't been on a diet for the last 10 years, what would they look like now? I mean, maybe their weight is still stuck at 200 pounds, but if they have just not cared and been doing what they were doing 10 years ago, would they be at 250? Would they have other health issues? You don't know. It's it's a hypothetical question. But, I mean, at least they've taken charge for the last 10 years of their their diet in some ways and their health and their outlook on it. And probably their weight they've maintained is the weight that their body's used to. I mean, we spoke about set point in the last podcast and again, how to change those set points. So from that point of view, I mean, it's not all bad. Just watching what you eat and maybe if the weight doesn't go down, you're still a healthier person than what you were if you hadn't even bothered. And... Going back to not being able to give somebody motivation, but just surrounding yourself with other like-minded people. We actually have said this before in podcasts that if your friends are not on board, change your friends because it sounds drastic. And we've said this before about it, that how we changed our friends in the UK. We started going to a gym. It's not that we stopped being friends with um, the previous friends that we hung around with but our lifestyle and habits changed and when you're with other like-minded people you you become more motivated to make changes and to to stick with them at the end of the day and don't get divorced because we said so (laughs) i didn't say anything about divorce okay (laughs) <laughs> so change, just, you said stop hanging around with the people you hang around with no 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 stop hanging around with them. like if the friends are not supportive like if they are not like on the same wavelength as what you are but you but know, even if even if your husband or wife isn't supportive i mean a lot of times husbands and then wives you divorce them yeah yeah <laughs> Even if husbands and wives aren't supportive, a lot of the times it's more often than not they don't understand kind of what you're doing. So if you kind of sit them down and explain to them, this is not for weight loss, this is for health, this is the science behind it. And maybe you should, you know, you try doing a couple of things. Maybe, you know, you try and do it together a little bit. I know I've had clients where the other half really isn't interested and they do have to go it alone. And to be honest, if there is garbage and stuff in the house, uh, like snacks and other things that aren't kind of real food and kind of, again, they're not off plan, but it's things you need to kind of cut back on. With the best will in the world, sometimes 
you're going to go for that if it's in the house. So the more you can get your partner, friends and everybody else kind of work colleagues on board with what you're doing, then the better. And I mean, don't give them the figures I'm going to lose this much. It just you're, you're going on a healthier lifestyle and weight loss is a byproduct of a healthier lifestyle. As we've said with other diets, when we spoke on other podcasts about diets, weight loss really is a byproduct. It shouldn't be the main goal. It shouldn't be the main thing you should be going for. And again, that's why people lose motivation because losing weight can be hard because, again, you're fighting your body from an evolutionary point of view, tooth and nail, to give up weight that it might not want to give up. So having a healthier outlook on life and being healthier may be the primary primary motivator and the primary goal and weight loss can be just that side side effect digging deep into those intrinsic motivators as opposed to the extrinsic yeah yeah but again try and have a mixture of the both as much as you can yeah. sometimes the the intrinsic ones can wane and the the extrinsic ones will take over but like i say at the end of the day really it's lifestyle and discipline and I think one of going back to I'm just we're going to mention Mark and Rhonda once one, more, one more time last time. Yeah. And uh, uh, Mark Mark said, I mean, like at the at the start of the podcast, I think it was, it's a cle- an old cliche, but it really is the lifestyle thing, and it's something that we try to promote with people, like the, some some exercise and some whole foods. I'm saying digging deep into extrinsic and extrinsic and intrinsic, and I do. Well, we both like perform like workplace wellness like programs and a, a big statistic of employees want financial rewards to get them motivated to actually do a workplace wellness program. But statistics show that 70% of workplace wellness like programs actually fail. So that monetary, that extrinsic monetary like option, a lot of like the employees want it, but then that isn't even enough of a motivator to actually keep them going. Talking of statistics, did you know that 78% of all under hit puts don't go in? <laughs> I just... thought it was 100% of all under hit puts. No, it's just a golfing thing. <laughs> so we hope you've kind of got something, if it's just motivated to go and try putting in golf. Yeah. Hopefully you got something from this. And again, just look at maybe having a change of perspective and getting away from the, oh, I'm not motivated, getting away from the whole motivation thing and looking at your goals from a different light, maybe having those goals, quartering those goals, making those goals way smaller, way more achievable. And again, look at it from a health point of view. Hopefully we've kind of helped you with this podcasts into kind of making some more health changes that again will get you farther and closer towards those goals so not in tradition we actually know what we're going to do next week already like we, we did this week yeah because yeah. we're, we're actually getting almost prepared now because yeah. it's winter and we've got nothing else to do <laughs> well we have okay so next week or next podcast we're going to talk about bloating Ooh. So water retention, so bloating from foods, bloating from female times of the month and other things. And again, how we may be able to mitigate those bloating things, how we may be able to keep that weight a little bit more steady rather than undulating so much with the water coming and going. And we'll tackle that next time. See you then. That's all we have time for right now, but we do hope that you join us for our next show. And if you want to contribute to an upcoming show by suggesting a topic that you would like us to discuss in more detail, then hop over to our website, healthyhalfhourpodcast.com, subscribe to our podcast and submit your suggestions. The Healthy Half Hour Podcast was brought to you by The 7 Day Shred, and don't forget to share our details with your friends and review our show. Until next time, thanks for listening.